My name is Robert Benjamin. I'm Director of Managed Services with Networks Unlimited. Office 365 is Microsoft's software subscription service, which is basically replacing OfficeBox product. Traditionally, you would buy a box of, you know, a box product for Office, uh, let's say Office 2010 or 2013, um, and you would get some sort of install or a key to unlock the software you install on your PC, and you basically then had the rights to run that software for four or five different applications, whichever version of Office you bought. Well, with 365, um, you get those same uh, features and applications on your desktop, but you also get web versions of every one of those applications. So let's say you were away from your main work computer, but you wanted to do work using the, the applications, you could log in and still have access to those applications. So that's one difference is now you have the ability to work from pretty much anywhere. Um, and you're no longer tied to the license on that PC. You could be on another PC. Another difference is box products typically were limited to one or maybe three installs with the license. So I would buy the box product and I might be able to install it on two or three PCs. Office 365 allows up to five devices per user and that includes devices like iOS devices or Apple devices, um, smartphones. So now um, it's priced more by user than it is by PC than it was before. Um, and it allows you to really access Office through the web apps from any computer. So you can have up to five of your own devices, but with the web apps, you could really be working from any computer that has internet access. And that's a very, very big difference from the box product approach. The other interesting thing is with the box product approach, you would buy Office 2010, 2013. Well, you're only really licensed to run that version. Um, you might be able to downgrade it if you want to go backwards, um, but for the most part, when Office 2015 or Office 8 or whatever they call it, the next version that comes out, if you owned a box product key, you would have to pay for an upgrade or buy a new license. With the subscription service of Office 365, you'll be able to get those upgrades as they come out with no additional charge. So that's a nice feature for a lot of businesses because it'll flatten out their expenses. They can just budget for a constant office expense um, and no longer have to deal with versioning nearly the way they used to have to. The new benefits with Office 365 include, um, for one, a hosted mailbox for every user. So that's different than the past where users would have to connect to either a mail service on the outside of their network or buy an exchange server. Um, now it's included with Office 365 and Microsoft provides that mailbox for the users. Um, in addition, um, it includes Link Server, which is a presence and communications platform for messaging and video uh, conferencing. Um, as well as SharePoint services, so not all um, small businesses are really accustomed to what SharePoint is, but it's a collaborative uh, platform for multiple people to work on projects or streamline processes for their companies. Absolutely, so if you look at all of the things contained within um, 365, um, it's pretty clear that it's Microsoft's offering to compete with um, what Google has in their Google Apps um, suite, um, but do so they do so in a way with uh, applications that a lot of businesses are used to using because it's still paired with things like Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, Microsoft Outlook. Um, uh, so it very directly competes with the two and they have price plans that range all the way down to very competitive with Google um, to more expensive um, platforms that include other more expensive business platforms like SharePoint and other pieces. You know, one of the reasons um, I think a lot of our small businesses have picked 365 over Google Apps is the compatibility. Um, a lot of small businesses do business with very large businesses. So um, even though they may be a small business, um, it doesn't mean that they don't, their customers or their suppliers or vendors aren't very, very large businesses. So compatibility and staying within the Microsoft uh, application suite is pretty important to them. Um, so they're still communicating with document types and platforms that are similar to enterprise. It's a little different than it was in the past because the box product would basically install, you'd have your applications, you'd go down the road. Um, it would be a little disruptive because while they're installing, you can't use them. Um, one of the things that's different with Office 365, because we're including things, Microsoft's including things like the email box, Link, and SharePoint, um, there's a little bit more configuration 
um, with the new suite of um, sort of software services that are included. Um, once they're done, they're done. Um, so they require less maintenance or low maintenance. But the fact of the matter is, it's a, for many customers, it's going to be like a mail migration, like changing your mail servers. And so that can be a little bit of a hurdle and it needs to be timed in a way that, that works with the business's um, schedule, their business model. But yeah, that, there's a little bit, little bit of a difference between putting a CD in the, in the machine and putting in a key and loading it versus actually migrating everybody's mail to the cloud. It's a little bit more cumbersome. And there, are, there will be um, upfront expenses involved with that to get it all migrated that first time, but they're just one-time expenses. And then from there forward, it's just a subscription service. So lots of other software publishers have already changed their market offering to be cloud-based. And for the reasons of predictable billing, common platform for all users, um, offsite and secure um, backend storage and backups and secure data centers, that's the reason Microsoft's offering the same benefits through Office 365.